So, your metabolism, all the billions of reactions that happen inside your cells every second of your life, they've got to happen fast. Now, the temperature that most of your cells are kept at means that these reactions tend to go naturally quite slowly. Enzymes, though, are molecules that can speed up these reactions, and they can speed them up without getting used up themselves. And that's why they're called biological catalysts. So enzymes can actually speed up a reaction by up to 10 to the 21 times. They are extremely effective. Good pub quiz question. Do you know the most common enzyme on the planet? The answer is ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylate oxygenase, better known as Rubisco. Now, this is an enzyme that is used in the process of photosynthesis and you will learn much more about it uh, when you study that topic later on in the course. So, here's some basics on enzymes. Enzymes are globular proteins, and you should know all about protein structure from when you studied it earlier on in the course. Most of the names of enzymes end, end in A's. They have a very specific shape because of the bonding as explained in the protein structure. Uh, so because of the primary structure of the protein, the chain of amino acids, the protein will fold up and form a very specific shape. Because of this specific shape and because of an area called the active site in the enzyme, they have what we call a high specificity. What this means is that they will catalyze usually only one reaction, so you need one enzyme for one reaction. Now the active site, this bit where the, the substrate is going to bind into, the substrate is the molecule that the enzyme will act on, the active site where the substrate binds into is very, very small. It's a very small part of that enzyme. And its shape will be dependent on that amino acid sequence and how, that, uh, how they fold up. The substrate will bind into it by forming little weak and non-covalent interactions with the R groups of the active site's amino acids. Now, enzymes can either help break something down, which is called a catabolic reaction, or they can build something up, which is an anabolic reaction. They can work inside cells, which is called, those are called intracellular enzymes, or outside cells, which are extracellular enzymes. Now, intracellular enzymes that you've come across already are things like uh, DNA uh, polymerase and helicase, the ones that you found when you did DNA replication. And the ones, extracellular enzymes that you may have heard of are probably the most common ones are the digestive enzymes, things like amylase and lipase. So, as already mentioned, enzymes speed up the rate of reactions. Now, for a reaction to occur, there has to be enough energy uh, to kick the reaction off. This is what we call the activation energy. It's shown on the graph here, and as you can see, you've got the reactants, you've got the products, but you've got to get enough energy into the reactants initially to, to get the reaction to, to work. I like to think of it as if you're sort of pushing a boulder up a hill. You've got to get that boulder up to the top of the hill. Once you get up to the top of the hill, boom, it's down the other side and the reaction takes place and you get the products at the end. But you've got to put this energy in initially to get that boulder up the hill. Now, the way enzymes work is that they actually lower that activation energy. It means that you don't need as much energy to get the reaction to work. You can see it represented on this graph as the red line. If you think back to that boulder analogy, it's a bit like you've got a couple of friends to help you get that boulder up to the top of the hill. You don't need to put as much energy in to, to then make the reaction work. Now, as we mentioned, there's two types of metabolic reaction. There's anabolic, where you build molecules up, and there's catabolic. In anabolic ones, you take small molecules, use some energy to make these larger molecules. So you've got to put energy into it. So it's what we call an endergonic reaction. Energy is required. Catabolic's the opposite. You've got a large molecule, you're going to break it down, release some smaller molecules and some energy, and that's what we call an exergonic reaction. And enzymes are used for both these types of metabolic reaction. Now, metabolic reactions like these that happen inside cells are actually reversible. They can go forwards or backwards. And if you took them and did them outside in a test tube, for example, they'd actually reach a state of equilibrium. They would just balance out. Um, but that doesn't happen in cells, because in cells you are either adding new reactants all the time or you're removing products, and that is um, meaning that the reaction will always keep going in a certain direction. 
So, we know that they must bind these enzymes to something called the substrate to form an enzyme substrate complex and for this reaction to take place. But how does that work? How do the enzymes and the substrate bind? Well, there's two hypotheses that you should know about, the lock and key and the induced fit. So first of all, lock and key. Now this is basically the idea that the active site has a very specific rigid shape that is perfectly complementary to the substrate. They fit together like a lock and a key. And this model explains just how, you know, this idea of specificity of enzymes, it explains that really, really well. And for a long time, this was the only theory of how enzymes worked. If you look at this animation, this is the idea. Here's an enzyme, here's a substrate. The substrate enters that active site, which is perfect. It's a perfect fit. They're complementary to each other. An enzyme substrate complex forms, the reaction occurs, and the products are then free to leave the active site, and the enzyme can be, um, go and, and do the same thing over and over again. Now, in the induced fit model, it's more likely that the active site is not a rigid shape, but one that is more flexible. Once the substrate enters the active site, it then molds around the enzyme, it fits in, but it's not this perfect shape to begin with. Now, due to X-ray crystallography, this model has gained a lot more credibility in recent years. So you can see here, the enzyme and the substrate are not a perfect match to each other, but as the substrate move in, the enzyme's active site molds around that, that substrate, the reaction occurs, the products form and leave the active site, and the active site actually then returns back to its original shape. Now, you can split enzymes into groups based on the type of reaction that they catalyze. So you've got the polymerases. These are enzymes that uh, build large molecules, things like DNA. You've got the ligase, which is kind of like the glue of enzymes. They're the, uh, they're, they're, they stick small sections together and join things together. You've got hydrolases. Hydrolases break down uh, molecules. They break bonds using water hydrolysis reactions. Transferases actually take a group from one molecule and add it to another one. And then you've got oxidoreductases, which move electrons from one molecule to another. Now, don't worry too much about these because you're going to revisit these all throughout the course in various different, uh, various different times.